this is a clip from the Rory and Maul pack podcast, and clearly Maul is not fucking with J. Cole. Clearly Maul is not uh, one of the people that will be, you know, putting J. Cole in his top anymore, saying that J. Cole is one of the greatest because he feels that Drake, not Drake, J. Cole did the service with jumping out and then pulling back away. So let's take a look at this clip from uh, Rory and Maul. You did that. If you never did that, oh, we don't have, oh, it's like, bad, yo, fuck it, be the one engage, it's cool. But bad. you can't engage and then say, nah, you know. You never done something and had to change your heart afterwards? Oh, I punched <laughs> niggas in the face, jumped niggas, beat niggas up, all that. Got home and was like, we was wrong for that. So, but I ain't stop in the middle of the fight and be like, yo, nah, y'all. And he and homie swung on me first? That's actually usually the guy that, get hit, that gets hit. And the dude swung on me first? Kendrick swung first. Let's be clear. Kendrick punched J. Cole in the mouth. Not, of course, not literally, but he responded to that bar. He's sitting on Cole's bar. All Cole was supposed to do was fight back. And he did, and then decided, nah, I don't want to fight you. All right, man, cool. You don't want to fight, cool. But you can't hang out at the cool table no more. You can't run. Me and you can't be friends, and we just made all this money together, and we lit, and then a nigga stepped to you. And punch you in your face, and I get in the fight for you, pretty much, is what Drake did. Because he shit it on your bar. But fuck it, it's my it's on my song on my album. I'm getting in it. See, that's what I want to agree. I won't agree with that. It was like this J. Cole thing, and then uh J. Cole hopped out there, and it was like Drake said, uh, what, what let me I had to exactly what he just said. And punch you in your face, and I get in the fight for you, pretty much. Yeah, okay. So J. Cole's the one who got punched in the face figuratively, and then Drake's like, I'm going to fight for you while you step back. That's not what happened. Like, like, like that was not just about J. Cole. And I get the line that everybody, you know, reiterates is, you know, fuck the big three. It's just big me. Like, everybody talks about that bar, which would be J. Cole in First Person Shooter, constantly bringing up the big three. But right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali, that is about him. But all my dogs getting buried. It's the K for all these nine. You're going to see Pet Cemetery. Like, that, that's shot to Drake. So, like... He punched both of them. He like, bow, bow. like I hit both these guys in the face. He just punched Cole and then slight shit about Drake. And then like, okay, it's just you, Cole. You hop out there by yourself and see what you got to do. No. The reason I feel like J. Cole hopped out first was because he had nothing to wait on. I feel like Drake hopped out later because he wanted to see what else may be about himself on the next project. I know people conveniently leave that out when they say, oh, Drake took so long. Strategically, because Kendrick gets praised on strategy, strategically, if Kendrick Lamar and Future and Metro seemingly are making albums that are centered around dissing me, why would I pull the trigger too soon and not wait to see what might come on the second album? Because I might have other shit I need to respond to, which we did with ASAP and other things of that nature. And even, I think, The Weeknd as well. So I don't agree with that. I don't agree with just, oh, uh, Cole got punched and Drake had to come and try to save Dave because it had nothing to do with him. There was a lot that had to do with, with Kendrick. I mean, with Drake. And I feel like when Kendrick says that, he's taking a shot at J. Cole. But I do feel like he really only wanted to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drake. Not because I think he's scared of J. Cole. Because in a, in a grand scheme of, you know, placement, nobody ever really pushed J. Cole as number one. Right? So... For Kendrick to put the time and effort into beating J. Cole, I don't want to say there's no benefit in doing that, but in some people's mind, Drake's number one, Kendrick's two, and Cole is three. In other people, Kendrick's one, J. Cole's two, Drake's three, and however you want to like divvy that up. But in most people's, if you were to poll 100 people, most people would have in that three Kendrick over J. Cole. So going to battle with J. Cole for Kendrick, doesn't really do too much for him. So if we're thinking that Kendrick's doing this strategically, he really wants to go against Drake. That's the guy he really has to vanquish to be solidified top number one across the board in history. And, and we'll look back in textbooks and see this. And that's what he has to be. So even when people say that J. Cole hopped out there and he said what he said, and then he retracts what he said because he heard what was going to come, what was going to come from this. That's why he retracted. In a way, it makes sense. Like, okay, we're not just rapping. We're not talking shit about each other's discography. We're potentially going down, like, the pedophile role. And oh, y'all are digging up dirt. That's that's what we're doing here. Because even with that, because I, like I said, I watch everything. I watch everybody. And, they, and I even said it earlier. I said Drake did bring up um, Whitney first. 
But when you say that J. Cole heard, because this is everybody's narrative about J. Cole, J. Cole heard this was going to get personal. It was going to get into digging up dirt. That's what somebody told him. Whether it was Kendrick, whether it was school, but what somebody told him that is what everybody's saying. Then why are we acting like a nigga didn't already have this type of energy planned? Unless Kendrick knew that Drake was going to most likely go down this route due to history, because history can kind of tell you what somebody's going to do. When he went at Meek Mill, he used Nicki Minaj as a, as a thing in that battle. And in that case, it wasn't to, you know, throw the woman under the bus. It was really to make Meek Mill look bad by having a more powerful woman as his wife. Push a T. Obviously, you bring up the Virginia Williams thing. I'll make it ring like Virginia Williams. So he brings up that. Then we saw here with Whitney. So maybe Kendrick knew he was going to go that route. And so he was letting him, like, hey, Cole, I'm going to start off the battle friendly with Drake. But we both know Drake. We both know his history. If he takes it there, I'm taking it further. That's something you don't want to do, right? That's what he said. So anyways, let's continue. Much as what Drake did, because he shit it on your bar. But fuck it, it's my it's on my song on my album. I'm getting in it. He has some slick shit to say about me. All right, cool. But I can't start fighting this nigga and then you run and go home. We we really pretending he, that Drake this beef ran, was about. Ra Drake grabbed his ball and ran home. And, and, and just to pause on that, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, at that point, Drake hadn't even started fighting yet when J. Cole dropped Seven Minute Drill. I don't think Drake dropped anything to that point. So Drake wasn't fighting yet. J. Cole at that moment was the only one fighting. So if we want to really use this analogy, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Drake dropped push-ups or Taylor, anything like that yet before Drake had, I mean, before Cole had apologized. So really, if, if you want to use what the term would be, the term would be, hey, fuck you and your man. J. Cole hop out there. We about to, what's up? We about to fight. And then someone told J. Cole, hey, them niggas got a gun in the back. And J. Cole said, you know what? I don't want to fight. I'm about to get up out of here. That's how I would see that scenario. Because I don't think Drake started swinging yet. Um, and ran to LeBron's Cut it out. barber chair. Cut it out. Cut it out. Because you you just talking about he, he didn't keep put out another song or he didn't want to put out any more. He, he got put, punched in the mouth. He put out and music. And then said, bro, you're taking he it too far. Out, he put out music and he continued to put out music. Yeah, Drake this literally nigga put said out a it's song going too and far. And three days later, that shit was off DSPs. Yo. Mall. I don't want to hear it. Mall. By the way, what I'm about to say, I don't want to hear it. I don't, don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It don't matter what you're about to say because you're wrong. No, I'm I don't not. care. I don't care about. He said I don't want to beef, and then the whole A side of Scorpion is still talking about it. What are you talking about? The A side of Scorpion. What are you talking? Is the <laughs> when somebody says that, what are you talking about? They know in that way they're wrong. I say this all the time as a Drake fan. The worst thing he could have did, like he could have just not responded to Pusha T in that moment. The worst thing that Drake did was go on LeBron the shop and be like, "I didn't want to disappoint you." Bitch. It's like, what are you fucking doing? You don't have to respond to the kid shit. Like, if you don't want to respond, you don't got to respond. He put out um, the last song on D Daytona, which I can't, it was a red eye, red eye. I don't remember what it was called. He threw shots at Drake, and then Drake dropped uh, W Freestyle, and then he dropped Story of Addy Dawn. If Drake decided at that point, I don't want to respond anymore for whatever reason, right? I believe that Drake really had more vitriol, more smoke for Kanye than he did to push a T, because it may be in his ego, he saw push a T as like a minion of somebody who was really the puppet master of why these things were being said, why these things were being done. So he really wanted to go at Kanye more than he wanted to go at Pusha T. That's how, that's what I think. Because even after the beef, like they're saying, Scorpion, there's bars alluding to what's going on. But even when he does these freestyles, behind the beat freestyle, behind the whatever, the, the fire and the boost type shit, he's dissing Kanye more than he's dissing Pusha T. So I feel like, okay, if I'm Drake, I'm like, I diss this guy. I'm diss to push your T. I do throw you in there because I said ring like Virginia Williams, but I don't want to really big you up. So he could have just not respond after the story of Addie Don. Okay, y'all got me. I got a kid. Y'all win. But going on LeBron's show after, I mean, like, and, and all the rumors of I had this massive record that was going to destroy. Like, I don't really want to hear that. And I keep that because I said that at the time. Like, I don't want to hear that, really. If you're not going to drop it, if you have this fucking amazing record that's so scathing, that's so another level, either drop it or just don't even mention it. So Maul should be willing to concede that point that Drake, in a way, did something not all the way like Cole, because like he said he dropped music, but the LeBron shop thing is is not a good look. The, the entire, the entire Scorpion A-side is, is about 
Pusha T and Kanye West. What are we talking about? He said, yo, I don't want to do this anymore. You guys took it way too far. Like, I'm done with this. And then dedicated the that's whole side of the album that's not, to discussing what happened. That's not what happened, though. That's not what happened. We talking about two different things here. We talking about two different things here. We talking about two different things here. That situation clearly went a whole nother way. And other people got involved. I was like, this shit, somebody got hurt in Toronto on stage. Somebody got stabbed. That shit went a whole different way. That Wait, first of all, that happened after. Happened after what? After, after the this. Take back. After the take back. What I'm, what I'm saying is that situation was a, that was really a. It had not gone too far except for. And to be fair, uh, Jake, uh, what was his name? Drake didn't take back his diss at Pusha T and Kanye West. He just said he don't want to take it further than whatever, you know, whatever was already there between the two guys. He didn't apologize. J. Cole apologized. Man, I did some lame ass shit. I shouldn't have did that, man. That nigga albums are great. He do got good albums, y'all. All right. Okay. We don't need to. Come on, at least. J. Cole, if one thing, if one thing I would ask, just let me keep the album thing with Kendrick Lamar. Let me keep that. Let me keep shitting on to Pimp a Butterfly in Kendrick discography. Let me keep that, at least. That's the one thing I was upset about. Apologize for whatever else you want to apologize about. Just don't apologize about Tapimba Butterfly being Kendrick's most boring, um, unlistening, listenable albums. Right? Let let that still have been the narrative. But he didn't do that. He went out and apologized, and he gave in to the to the Pulitzer uh, Pulitzer people, the Grammy people, the artistic, like all them type fucking people. Tell the truth. Damn a good kid, Mad City are light years better than to Bim Butterfly. At least he could have let me have that. That's really what I was mad about. But regardless, um, Drake didn't apologize. He didn't take it back. He just said, I don't want to take it further. Listen, or, quote unquote, exposing Drake's kid. That was as far as it went. Oh, listen to what I'm saying. That situation was way more personal and way more behind the scenes shit than this situation. Kendrick and Cole, and Cole don't is have... saying, you're calling someone a pedophile. I don't want to be a part of this. Dog, are you listening, it's man? Personal. Why are you talking about what he's saying to Drake? I'm talking about Kendrick and Cole. You talking about Drake? You keep bringing Drake name up. I'm saying Kendrick and Cole didn't have no real beef with each other. It... I think Maul's missed, because Maul is so stuck at his point and being right that I think what Rory's trying to say is, J. Cole sees that there's a potential for this to get crazy. So the reason I'm bringing Drake in is because Drake is obviously a part of the triangle of the battle. He would have been an aspect of it because if J. Cole would have stayed in, Kendrick would have essentially been fighting two of, the, two of the greatest rappers of all time at one time, and they both would have been a part of it. So when he brings up the, the Drake pedophile thing, that's him to me saying like, hey, it's going to get nasty. It's going to get bad. So I'm not sure if... Like, me and you, we're cool on some rap rap tip, but I'm not sure if you want to hop in this ring with us and really get down how it might possibly get down. But then, like I said in the beginning, that also goes to the context of Kendrick Lamar was most likely already going to try to use this pedophile angle. So this whole, oh, he was going to keep it simple, but then Drake did that and it just opened Pandora's box. No, if we're going to believe J. Cole stepped out because of that reasoning alone, Kendrick was already willing in, 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 in his mind going to present the fact that Drake is some type of pedophile and, and predator and R. Kelly-like figure. So, and also, if that's true, J Jacob warned a brother that, the, I mean, he, I guess he knew it because he said it, he said it on Taylor Man Freestyle because, oh, you heard it on Joe Budden Podcast that I like little girls or whatever he said in Tupac's voice. So, it wasn't no street shit that, with each other. He didn't Cole, hit can't you just shit on his bar? And as the MC, you're supposed to stand on your bar and defend your bars. And I'm saying Cole is suggesting that he had heard where they were going to take it. it and it was, let me finish. Care where they and it was going it. to get too personal the same way Drake sat with LeBron and said, it got too oh, personal. Do keep, I don't want to do this anymore. Why do you keep and then he explained what happened. Oh the whole God, A side of You can't keep Drake name out your mouth. Stop saying Drake. What? <laughs> Stop <laughs> saying Drake. <laughs> what? Yes, you the only nigga. I, I didn't say anything I love about Drake. Drake. I said Kendrick and Cole. Kendrick and Cole. <laughs> I, That's why I'm keeping I know. it. You keep I'm going. But when Drake did a Scorpion, I'm not talking about Drake. But I'm the, talking about that. That's not fair, Maul, because he's using an example of you. You're the very thing you're critiquing Call of doing. Drake did years before that. And if on top not of that, on a bigger platform. Why can't I bring up Drake when you keep saying, "Yo, if somebody brought me on tour, gave me a million dollars, gave me my first uh, number one hit," you keep bringing up Drake. What are we talking about? I'm, I'm replying to what you're saying. All right, man. All right, so I do think Rory at the end of the day he won that little exchange just because Maul was so unwilling to even 
can see the example of Drake. Why do I keep bringing him up? Because it kind of dispels the... It, it doesn't dispel your argument. Your argument could be valid if you held it to the same standard of both people. But the fact that you're only kind of leaning it towards J. Cole and not towards what Drake did with Pusha T, it makes it a little bit, you know, different. But like I said, there is differences in them situations because Drake didn't apologize for it. He just said, I ain't going to do this with y'all niggas. Y'all got, y'all, y'all got it, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all win. My kid, my this, my that, y'all got it. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole with y'all. So, yeah, that, that's my thing. And I just think... I had a lot of comments yesterday because I put out a J. Cole, like J. Cole's apology backfires on him. And I brought up how like all that sounds good. All the, you know, you did so much for me, brother. You my guy. You know, I was rock with you. Don't let the people get in between us towards Drake. Maybe I need to slow down when I'm talking. Or maybe people, maybe I just got to understand that people will just willfully fly over the head what I'm saying. But when I say that Drake can still be upset with J. Cole, I'm not saying Drake, uh, J. Cole can't do music with whoever he wants to do music with. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> My guy, do it. Make music with whoever you want to do music with. That's fine with me. Go make another, go make a mixtape of Kendrick. I'm going to listen to it. I might love it. But don't be surprised if the person who was just in opposition with these people feels a type of way about what you're doing. Now, we can speculate, people, everybody in the comments, the songs were pre-recorded. They were pre-recorded. How the fuck y'all know they was pre-recorded? Y'all keep telling me they was pre-recorded. Who's, who confirmed these songs were pre-recorded? Obviously, that's a possibility. But now y'all stating to me like it's a fact. And even if they are pre-recorded, we've seen people have records with people about to come out, and they get uncleared. For whatever reason, they get uncleared. We've seen people give people verses and say, nah, we ain't putting that verse out. We've seen that happen before. Now, y'all can argue, do J. Cole need to be loyal to Drake? He don't have to do anything. What I'm saying is, if I'm Drake, me, if I am Drake and I live in Canada and I live in this mansion, I, I'm, I'm the best rapper in the world. If I'm Drake and I'm looking at J. Cole, I'm looking at J. Cole a certain type of way when this instance is going on. Yes, I am. Because, like I said in the video, you do the song with Future on the, on the next album, after um after whatever I got with these guys goes on, right? You do the album with you do the album with them. I don't know what the fuck just happened. But we still going. Let me turn the damn light back on. You do the album with them. And then, ooh, this bitch too bright. Hold on, y'all. My bad. I know what I did. I was trying to get the damn monitor back on, but let me turn it down a little bit. Alright, but anyways, you do the album with the guy after. We got the beef. The follow-up album to like that, to all that shit going on. You do the album with him. All right, fuck you. If I'm Drake, I'm looking like, all right, what the fuck going on? Okay, then Rocky diss me on that album. Rocky diss me on that album. Then I diss Rocky on Family Matters, and I did. me and Rocky got a thing going on here. Then Daylight is doing his thing, and then you do the record with Daylight. If I am Drake, I am going to feel the type of way about that situation. Yes. The same way anybody... If you were doing a venture with somebody and you uh, you guys are, you're the greatest of all time. You're the greatest, uh, whatever y'all are. Let's say y'all work in a fucking mail room together. You and somebody work in the mail room. Y'all are, y'all are, you feel like y'all are buddy, buddy at work. Y'all are, oh, we, we friends. You're the greatest mail clerk. No, you, you deliver the mail to base. We're the, we're the greatest. And there's some other fucking guy over there from this company. He's like, no, we're the fucking best mail room fucking people. And then you hop out there, you say, no, fuck you. We deliver the mail the best. There's like a nigga working at FedEx and UPS and you work at DHL or something. They say, no, nah, fuck you. We deliver mail the best. You hop out, you apologize. Then you go start working with the niggas over there. I'm still over here at FedEx. Like, what the fuck? We, what? So I don't understand why people can't even understand how that, how Drake would possibly be mad. J. Cole can do music with whatever he wants to do music with. That's fine. But there's always repercussions for what you do. And you can't say in that scenario that won't look like some, to somebody who feels like the entire industry is already against them, that in some way that is a little bit tad disloyal to them. Because maybe Drake assumes, and we don't know this because we can't confirm this, if this was the other way around, and let's say J. Cole was Drake in the situation, would Drake start doing records with every nigga that dissed J. Cole? And if he did, how would y'all feel, or how would y'all speak if y'all saw Drake doing records with every nigga that dissed J. Cole? I just don't feel like y'all be as charitable. 
I just I don't I honestly don't feel that way. I don't feel like people be as charitable with that situation. Because I'm not even talking about doing a record with Kendrick, who directly did. I'm talking about ancillary ancillary people to the beef. You start doing records with. They said Rocky literally dissed Drake on the song that J. Cole was a part of. Now I don't know. I'm not in the music industry. Y'all keep telling me it was pre-recorded. I don't know if rappers, especially rappers as big as J. Cole, say, hey, can you send me the verse you about to do before I before I, you know, before we put it out? I want to just get a pre-screen of it. I don't know if that how that works. And maybe J. Cole is just so in his own bubble, his own world, he don't even realize what ASAP Rocky's saying as far as Drake. I can even extend that courtesy. Maybe, maybe it's a possibility. But when it does come out, and everybody's running with ASAP this and Drake, and you're on the record, regardless of you nor not, Drake most likely is going to look at you a certain type of way. I don't understand how that's a hard concept to understand. The only reason I can see people don't understand that concept is if they just don't fuck with Drake. Because my thing is, replace it with anybody. Replace it with somebody you like and that happened to them. And then tell me how you would think that that scenario would play out. 